For six weeks, Dr. Kent Brantley worked nonstop treating dozens of Ebola patients at a hospital in Liberia. Despite taking extreme precautions, Brantley started feeling sick and three days later heard the devastating news that he too had contracted the deadly virus. He and his wife Amber have written about their experience in a new book, Called for Life, How Loving Our Neighbor Led Us Into the Heart of the Ebola Epidemic. Well, Dr. Bentley, I want to go back to, to the day that you received the news that no person would ever want to hear. You tested positive for Ebola. So what was going through your mind um, when you received that news? My first response was from my, my doctor mind. I wanted to come up with a plan. I said, okay, what's next? What's our plan? What are we going to do about this problem? Um, and then my next response came from my, my husband mind and I said, how am I going to tell Amber? Um, it, it was not as dramatic as one might envision it. It was, it was surreal. It was a very weighty moment, but it was a very peaceful moment. It just was very matter of fact. And in that I faced a lot of fear and anxiety over the, the days that followed that. But that peace persisted for throughout my illness, um, and it was it was just a we just dealt with it. Mm. Now, Amber, for you, uh, you know, as a wife and a mom of two, how did you feel when you got that phone call from from your husband? I felt horrible. <laughs> it was it was awful, um, but I had anticipated it. I knew he was sick and had been getting sicker and that we were testing and waiting on that result. So it wasn't a shock. I guess I had had some preparation for that, but it was still just gut wrenching to hear that. And I don't know, what can you, I, I didn't know what to say to him either. I wanted to be encouraging, but what can you, what can you say? I'm so sorry, Kent. I'm so, so sorry. Now, Dr. Kent, in, in your book, you talk about um, the humiliation of Ebola. And um, through the process, you went through some dark moments. Even there was a day that you almost died. So how did your faith in Jesus help you get through some of your darkest moments? Some people ask me if, if I think my faith is what healed me or if, if my faith is what made me survive Ebola. I think in a very real way, it was my faith in Jesus that put me in a place where I got Ebola because I was trying to follow Jesus with my life. But it was that same faith that brought me peace in the midst of the anxiety and the fear. And it wasn't a peace that took away those, those feelings. It was peace in spite of them. And it was the knowledge that whether I lived or died, nothing could separate me from the love of God. And that was, that was what I needed facing my own potential death. That was all I needed to, to stay faithful to God, was to know that he was, he was going to be faithful to me, whether I lived or died. And I know so many people were praying, and thankfully, your story ended well, and um, you recovered from Ebola. And I just want to go to that moment when the two of you reunited and you were finally, after so many weeks of uncertainty, able to give each other a hug. How, how, what was that moment like? It was beautiful. Um, the CDC declared him free of Ebola virus in his blood. And so the nurses helped him to shower and go through the steps to come out of his isolation room. And they had taken his wedding band and cleaned it somehow. I don't know what they did to that, but, and gave it to me outside of the room. And so when he was done with his process of decontaminate, decontaminating, I guess, to leave the room, he came out to me and we just hugged and <laughs> it was beautiful. And I gave him his ring back and it was very sweet and it was just sweet. <laughs> now, before you had Ebola, um, you got Ebola. You guys actually went on a medical mission to Liberia. It wasn't anything to do with the Ebola epidemic, but then it came when you were there and you chose to stay. Now, most people, if they knew they were in danger, would leave right away. 
What drove you to stay and help? We, we had moved to Liberia to serve the people of Liberia with the love of Jesus. And Ebola didn't take away that purpose for being there. If anything, it heightened our sense of purpose when the people that you have come to serve and to love are in the midst of crisis, that's when they need that service, that compassion even more. And so we, we felt like we can't abandon them. We can't abandon our neighbors when the need is only increasing. And, and it was the, it, it seemed like the natural, it was, it was something we, we certainly talked about. What are we going to do in this situation? But it was the only natural decision was to stay and help. For people who are watching, families who are going through, maybe not, it may not be Ebola, but something like a terminal illness and just, they're just feeling so hopeless. What advice would the both of you give to them in this moment of pain and uncertainty? For people like you're talking about who are in what seems like a hopeless situation, Our hope doesn't rest in our circumstances. Our hope is in our great God who is who he says he is and who promises that one day he will set all things right. And, and that, that is our hope.